The animation modifier can be applied to any Swift UI binding and it'll cause its values to animate between current and new values. This works even if the value you're trying to animate doesn't sound like it ought to be animatable. For example, you can imagine uh, animating between one and two. You go from one to 1 1.1, 1.15, 1.2, da da da. But you can also animate between true and false, which sounds impossible if there's no room between, but it still works. This is best explained with some code we can look at. And so we're going to put a property in here to do at state private var animation amount is 1.0. Then our view body, I'll make a V stack with a stepper inside. This will be a titled scale amount with a value attached to dollar animation amount dot animation. Animate this binding changes in the range of one through 10. Then a spacer, and then a button saying, uh, tap me with animation amount plus equals one. I'll add some more modifiers here. So we'll do padding of 40, 40. We'll do a background of red. We'll do a foreground style of white. We'll do a clip shape of circle, and then a scale effect of our animation amount. As you can see, let's run it back now. The stepper can move animation amount and tapping the button will add one to it. So I'll increase it here, up it goes smoothly, animating it correctly. Pressing the button, it's gonna jump up higher and higher. There's no animation there. So we have two ways of changing the same value here. Swifty while animate the bindings, we asked for it up here, but we'll animate the animation amount change of the button press because we haven't asked for it there. Now, as an experiment, I would like you to add one extra line of code to this body here. We're gonna say print animation amount and then return the VStack like so. This is not view code anymore. We have to have return before VStack so SwiftUI knows that's the part being sent back for the view. But printing out the animation amount, this part here matters. And to see why, give it a shot. I run the code again, and it's 1.0 down here. When I press plus, it's now 2.0. Press plus again, 3.0, minus two, minus one. So you can see it's printing out whole numbers. Okay, with a point zero, but still a whole number. But at the same time, you can see our button is animating up smoothly. It doesn't just jump up to two and three and down to two and one, it's sm moving smoothly here. What's actually happening is that SwiftUI is basically examining the state of our view before the binding changes. And then examine the target state of our view. Oh, it's now two, it's now three, whatever. And then apply an animation from get to point A to point B. This is how we can animate a Boolean changing. Swift isn't somehow inventing new values between false and true. It is animating the view changes that occur when that result happens. These binding animations use a similar animation modifier that we have on views. So you can go to town with animations here if you want to. We have an animation here, but I might say, actually, uh, I wanna animate this thing uh, using, let's do uh, dot ease in out, duration one second, repeat count three, auto reverse is true, whatever. It's your animation to control. Let's press command R now. And I just change the scale amount, it'll bounce up and down, and up and down like that. So it's now exactly what you asked for. Now with this variant of animation, as you can see here, we don't have to say, oh yes, please watch animation amount. It's literally attached to the value it should watch. It applies to only that particular binding changing. Now these binding animations effectively turn the tables on implicit animation. Rather than setting animation on a view and then implicitly animating with some sort of state change, we set nothing on the view. The view has no idea what's happening here. We instead change it automatically as our binding changes. In the former, the state change has no idea. It'll change animation. And this way, the view has no idea it'll be animated. Both work and both are important.